Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, lax rats alike, welcome back to another episode of The Crease Dive. I'm Jordy. Uh, you guys may not have heard from me at all recently, but uh, back in the booth, this is Jordy from Barstool with me, as always, the two guys who have been holding down the fort, uh, keeping things afloat over here, two guys who I am tremendously indebted to for keeping the crease dive not only alive but extremely well we've got dukes and ness on the mics boys so good to see you again it's great to be back i mean i, I miss you i see your guys faces on instagram tiktok twitter you guys are, are posting out the clips you guys have been crushing it over this season so far uh but just seeing your faces right here live and in action uh it's unbelievable i miss you guys i love you guys uh and it's may uh i mean what is it it's may 9th and what a, what a time for lacrosse. PLL College Draft just wrapped up last night. We're talking about this on Wednesday. We've got, uh, as you're listening to this, I guess the, the uh, NCAA tournament is already underway with Albany and Sacred Heart playing some playing games. So a uh, huge week ahead of us, gearing up for a huge summer. So, boys, great to see you. Thanks for having me back. Are you kidding me? It's a pleasure to have you back uh, was, on the mic. Yeah, it was beautiful. It's, it's, was, it's, it exceeded my expectations. For uh for the first welcome call back, but um, congrats on the sex. I think we have to say that one more time. Congrats on the kid. How's how's everything in dadhood right now? Uh, so dadhood's been great. Everything else pretty chaotic. We we got a lot of stuff going on right now. So yeah, we, we had the baby. Uh, we moved into a new house, which was a fixer upper. I'm not a fixer upper guy. Uh, so over the past couple months, having to learn how to do fixer up or shit uh, has been crazy. <laughs> uh, obviously, you know, I, I think most people listening know I also coach a high school team. So we've been in, in the thick of that season. Uh, boys just wrapped up uh, one or co we co won our league championship last year. So big, big for us. So uh, it's been pretty, pretty wild, but it, I mean, dad has been great. Ba baby's awesome. Uh, she's fired up to watch her first NCAA tournament coming up. <laughs> she'll be, she'll be popped. We've got a little swing for her just pop right in front of the TV. So she's uh, I mean, she can't wait for Virginia and St. Joe's to roll out the ball and get us going. Look, I know that like, everyone's going to be like draft just happened big week for the crease dive. You know, we had the reaction show on Sunday, Live, love doing that. Then we had the draft preview, third podcast of the week right now. But what I'm most interested in before diving into the PLL draft, before diving into the weekend preview, Jordy, how's Springfield Lax doing? I, I'm not even kidding. It, it, it occurred to me the other night that I have not talked enough high school lax on this podcast, and I think that it's you're the missing element to it. Yeah, I mean Springfield, Lax, we're, we're on a bit of a tear right now. Um, you know, some some highs and lows. Throughout the season, you know, we, uh, you know, we went down to, so we played a game at Maryland uh, over spring break. We played against um, uh, Archbishop Spalding yep. down there. Um, so, I mean, cool game, cool atmosphere, but dude, Spalding has this one poll. I think the poll's going to Virginia. So, uh, spoiler alert, Virginia's going to be loaded again at the poll position. Dude, oh, he's 6'8? Dude, Matt, like, I, he, he, handshake line after the game i said hey good game sir like really, really good job. <laughs> this kid is was a demon all over the field um you know we've got some players but like this kid was just unbelievable so spalding good program um but i mean springfield doing doing great right now uh right now dudes i think that next season and and this you know maybe we're teasing right now i don't want to put it teasing Give it to me. I don't want to put Let's it too far it. out there, but I think so. You know, this past spring break, we go down to Maryland, play against Spalding. I think we're going to go back to our roots, go up to the island next year. There's a wow. chance. That yes. A yes. Springfield Garden City Fuck showdown. Yes. Year. Oh my God. So, I'm going to be in your ear all game. <laughs> So I, I mean, it's it's still early workings of it, uh, but but there's a chance that that's that's the matchup next year. Damn, that's awesome. That would be great. I I tried. I made it to the uh, Garden City versus Bridgewater Roading game this year, Trip which was uh, yeah, which was a bit of a stinker because obviously Garden City won. But um, I, I miss uh, that. That would be fantastic. Great for the program. Great for the great for the pod. That that week we're not talking really one great, great, great for America, honestly. Yeah, yeah, great, <laughs> great for the Philly Long Island rivalry. That 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 is a uh, make or break game for both sides. Like I, I would say that like loser leaves town. Yeah, that that is a loser <laughs> leaves town game. Oh my god, that would be something else. But um, I'm glad to hear everything's going well with you. Last night, I know that I said this to you just on the side when we talked about like getting you back on the podcast. We were just like, since I joined and 
you, you let me be, become part of this podcast. We've been talking about Schellenberger O'Neill since 2021. And I think that me and you have been for the most part on the Shelly number one train for as long as he, like for as long as I can remember. I remember being like, I will draft him number one right now in 2021. So I've always thought very highly of him. What do you think about the outlaws deciding to go with O'Neill? Uh, so like, I, I think, again, you couldn't go wrong with either, th- like the three guys who could have been going number one, right? You got Shelly O'Neill, Cav. Uh, I, I don't think you could go like, like you're not going to pick Brennan O'Neill one overall. And I'm going to come up here and say like, Oh, you're an idiot for that. Like, dude, right. he, the kid was a MVP of the world championships last summer. Um, you know, O'Neill, the, like they're all difference maker. Like my biggest thing is I just think. Like, I, I think that Shelly is just so much more complete than anybody else that we've seen in mm-hmm. some, like, like, I, I don't want to like go too out there, but I mean, this is a podcast and we do need some clips. Like, I, like, I would say he's the most complete player since like Lyle, like in terms of a guy who can dodge, who can feed, who can shoot, uh, who can just kind of quarterback an offense, like who can do everything. Like, yeah, like O'Neal might be the biggest mutant in this draft, he might be one of the biggest mutants in lacrosse. And like, you just can't replicate that. Like he might have like, the, you know, the biggest, hardest shot. Like Shelly doesn't have, he doesn't have the biggest, hardest shot. He might, I mean, he's up there like in terms of like the greatest like feeder in, yes. in college across right now. He, he's up there for sure. But like, you could even still say like Matt Brandow might like facilitate the ball a little bit more. Um, like he, he might not be the very best, at anything but at the very least he's number two at at everything yeah you know what I'm saying? and and so like like brent like brennan is like the like again biggest mutant biggest shot like as far as like physical presence like just gets to his spots like yeah he's number one clearly but like you talk about him as a feeder like you know where where, where is he there you know maybe you know he's, he's a good feeder he could be like a top 20 guy but he sure shit isn't two you know shelly's like right up there top two top three in any category that you want out of an offensive player yeah it's a personal preference at that point nest i know you kind of said the other night in the draft preview you thought you thought it should be shelly am i correct yeah i mean i feel like we're all kind of on the same page that he just brings a little bit more to the game than o'neill and O'Neal might be a more dominant, like putting the ball in the back of the net guy. But like Jordy said, I mean, Schellenberger can dish the ball so much better than O'Neal can on an, any given night. But at the same time, he can give you one less goal than O'Neal. He might just give you four or five more assists. I think it's obvious he's the more complete player, but then it's hard to pass up on a guy that's the size of O'Neal and can just take over games the way he can. So. I don't know. I think it's kind of a win-win. I think it's an argument that just goes in circles, but I'm definitely on the uh, on the Schellenberger train. That's that's for sure. But they're both going to be lights out, so I guess it really doesn't matter. Yeah, I think that I I you know I am on the Schellenberger train. I think it was the better fit at X. I will say overall outlook on what the Outlaws did. I think they were they they had a great draft, and for some coaches that I believe are on the hot seat, I think two had great drafts, and I think one didn't have a great draft. Um, we'll dive into that a little bit, but yeah, I think. I think Shelly was the play, but at the end of the day, it's kind of like you could sleep better at night being like, I got the world games MVP yeah. on, on my team. Um, I'll say that the doubts that people have, you know, you have a big lefty coming in and O'Neal. How is that going to work with Wisnowskis? You need a feeder. Look, you drafted Logan number one a couple of years ago. Just because you drafted him number one a couple of years ago doesn't mean you necessarily have to play him still at attack. I could see him coming out of the box. I could see Brennan being down low. I could see Zawada being the guy that they wanted X facilitating, being that Nick turn for them. So overall, I liked the Outlaws draft in that regard, getting the two Duke guys on the same line. Um, I liked that move. Who do you guys think was a winner from last night's draft? Uh, I, my biggest winner right now going to be Xander Dixon. Uh, <laughs> Xander, Xander Dixon getting <laughs> hooked up with his boy Shelly again. Um, I mean, like, like this – he he was nicknamed the Slim Reaper for a reason. Like right. this kid would just all, all of a sudden you, it'd be the third quarter and you'd be like, wait, what the fuck? Like like Virginia's up by seven and Dixon has six goals. Like where where did those come from? Well, they all came from the stick of Connor Schellenberger. Um, you know, so being able to play with Shelly again, have him feeding him, uh, being able to play with Teat, 
uh, some more this summer. So I, I, I think like Xander Dixon, uh, strong, strong candidate to be probably the the league's leading goal scorer because he's just going to I, he might have the ball on his stick for. I don't know. Let, let's let's call it fifty five seconds this entire summer, and he could have yeah. 50 goals. You know, yeah. It's like it's like that Clay Thompson stat. It's like oh, he had six. Like he had sixty points in a game, and he yeah. took the ball like seven times. That's going to be Xander Dixon. Yeah, and I mean the Atlas in general. Like you pick up Liam Mentiman, like a, a guy who could be you know depending on who you talk to, a top three to top five goalie in the world right now. Um, you know, so so you kind of shore things up in cage you get a, a guy like Connor Schellenberger who, you know, again, doesn't matter which way you dice. Like he could be one, he could be two. He could, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't, I would never have seen him drop to three anyway. So at least they, you know, were able to get him there. Um, but yeah, really, really good draft out of them. Um, trying, trying to think about what else they did. Uh, Jake Stevens was a great pickup in my opinion. He's a guy that just stays on the field of motor. I, yeah, I really oh, like and that. Then, and then Tyler Carpenter. So you get like, I, I love, that entire Duke defense. Um, I, I know that they got their PPs whacked a little bit by uh, Notre Dame in the ACC final, but you know, I, I think that Duke defense um, <coughs> and just, I, I just keep thinking about how important it is to have mutants on your team. And I think a lot of them are mutants down there on, on that Duke defense. So you bring in a guy like Tyler Carpenter, um, you know, really good shutdown guy. So I, I thought that the Atlas had a really good, really good draft. Yeah, I thought that the Atlas needed a good draft. I think that like Pressler in general, I I put firmly on the hot seat after one season. Just going from like the college coaching to the high school coaching to then coaching coaches basically and like adults in the way that I you systematically or schematically like talk to these guys, I think didn't get through to the players the way the coaching style didn't get through to the players. So I think just pure talent based on this, a step in the right direction. I think Pseudo had a good draft. Now you know, like I said, they got Zawada, they got Brennan, and then they got Jake Pacino, which I had my thoughts on Jake Pacino, Jordy. And I'm not so I, sure. I, 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 I heard your thoughts on Jake Pacino, and I firmly agree with your thoughts on Jake Pacino. I think that he's a tremendous talent, a guy. I, I think he's a great, great clip guy. Um, and he's a perfectly fine defenseman, too. I just think that he's like one of those guys where it's like his draft stock's going way up right. because he scored a couple like nasty goals, and everyone's like, it's like, dude, you got eight other guys on the field at, when you're playing in the pros who are going to score nastier goals. Just give it to them. Right, and that's that's exactly where I stand is I thought he was the second to fourth best LSM in this draft, and people were trying to say, like, is this the best LSM of all time? Slow the sure. roll there. He, right. was, yeah. he, he, was, he was perfectly rated in this draft, which I had no problem with. It's just I think I tended to, like, shit on him a little bit or, like, nitpick at what he wasn't good at to ex- overcompensate or explain for why he shouldn't be a top five draft pick. Well, yeah, it's, it's like it's really hard to be in the and and this is why you know people don't give us enough credit for just being um, so good at what we do. Yeah. Where <laughs> like ev- everyone else just goes nuts for this guy, and and it's like, well, dude, like you guys are overblowing the hype so much that now we have to be dickheads about this guy right. just to bring yeah. it back down to reality. Like we don't want to be dickheads about Jake. Like I I would love to be able to watch him and just appreciate what he's able to do. Like he's, you know, he's an X factor when a guy, you have a guy who can get up and down the field and transition like that. But because the rest of you jackasses out there have blown it up so much, we need to then go over the, you know, and and you didn't go over the board at all. Like you, you I clipped the good stuff. I I went over the board a little bit at one point, you know, I, I said I wasn't going to talk shit and then I completely roasted his game. Well, you I said you weren't I, going to talk shit though, so that cancels that out. Right. It was like respectfully. Was it was like respectfully, shit. and then anything I say after respectfully can't be. Yeah, none of it was talking <laughs> shit. Yeah. You no disrespect. <laughs> Stephen again, like, like we have to kind of go a little over the top just to make sure that we bring it back to reality. But I agree. Like, dude, if the reality of the situation is that you're the second or, or second to fourth best poll in the draft class, that means you're pretty fucking good at lacrosse. Like right. you're, you're you're saying the guy's really good <laughs> at lacrosse. The only thing is like people are like, oh, well, no, he's great. And you just calling him good. Like that's you're, you're sleeping on him. Stop sleeping on Jake Pacino, Dukes. And then I got to start shitting on like the American East and like being like Vermont's not that good. We always fall for Vermont and then they get waxed by like Maryland in the tournament. And I don't want to do any of this. I don't want to say this out loud on a podcast that's getting recorded. Like I would not want to say that Vermont isn't Duke, but it, it, my hand was forced. And then just going on whatever else the outlaws did. They got Graham Bundy. 
which I think great pickup. Another mutant. Yeah, great pickup. And then round three, they got Zawada. Round four, this was my favorite pick of the draft, maybe for for the Outlaws. Just you know, everyone's gonna be like, how do how could you say that after? We got Brendan O'Neill one of one because the value that you got in four and the need with the face off, Luke Weirman being able to stay on the field. Now, you'll be looking at that being like, don't you have Farrell? Yes, but Weirman can stay on the field, which I think with the 32 second shot clock is huge. Um, fun fact Luke Weirman once lost to Springfield in a state championship game. <laughs> You're a dick. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That is so- <laughs> you think you so still congrats, think about that? Congrats to Luke Weirman, uh, Pennsylvania State runner-up and fourth-round draft pick to the Denver Outlaws. Uh, he's a stud. Yeah, he's he's gonna. That's that's huge for the Outlaws. I think that they have. It's it's important. You know, we talk especially with not being able to use polls anymore, right? Like right. last year, the the conversation was kind of like who you know you don't need a, a face-off guy. You can just throw a poll out Ethan there. Roll, you, yeah. You, yeah. You can throw Ethan roll out there and, and whatever. And just, you know, that way you don't have to worry about that early shot clock. Now that you can't do that anymore, having those two guys and just making the most out of those quick possessions that you can, um, going to be huge. So yeah, we're, we're in a great pickup, uh, sorry to bring up bad memories. And then we're going off of you, you, you kind of nailed it right there. Just like how many people, this draft is obviously loaded. I think it's, it's the 2003 NBA draft for in lacrosse terms, just probably, like I legit like off the top of my head four Hall of Famers. Like I mean, <laughs> oh, okay, we're doing the, this like, I don't know, like off <laughs> the top of my head that I could think of. But even even, even the Cannons, it, I think that was a great pickup by them to get Pat Cav at six, falling to six. Look, I think Ajax was probably the right pick. I think Stags kind of alluded to like that was a better fit for them at this time. I had no problem with the chaos going with No Block. They needed a midi. Entman obviously going. Five to the Atlas uh, when Ken Cannon just retired. Not good for our boy Jake Porter, by the way, though. No, not great for for Drizzy Jake. But you know what? I love Drake. Everyone knows I love Drake. He's he's my favorite goalie on the planet. Um, but I I really I think that he thrives so well as that backup goalie locker room juice guy. Like, like I, I, you need a great backup. Like we've talked about it on the podcast before, like Austin Cout, um, just a yep. guy who, who's going to be bringing the juice to the locker room. He's going to, you know, bring the energy on the sideline, do whatever he can to be a great teammate. Like I think that Drake Porter, I think he's a great goalie. He was division one. He was, he was so fucking good um, in that uh, right before, you know, a whole global pandemic shut down the world in 2020. Like that Syracuse team was so sick. He was dirty. Um, he's also a, a, a Lake Placid champion, but I think that he's a better teammate than he is a goalie. So, you know, I, I don't think that he'll have any issue kind of hanging out behind Liam Mentiman, who's a absolute sicko between the pipes. Yeah. And Connor Schellenberger has got to be pumped that he doesn't have to play against Entman anymore. You can play with him on the same team. Just after that massacre on Friday, but we'll get into that. But yeah, Pat Cav going six to the ca- cannons. I want to talk about it a little bit deeper. Is he going to steal his brother's job? Is that because uh, if so, that's a diabolical move by Holman. That can't that can't happen. It, 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 the cannons are built on brotherhood. I put out a tweet last night. They have the Curse brothers, the Aslanian brothers, the Kavanaugh brothers, and then they got Coach Holman and his son. There's no way that they're going to put Matt Kavanaugh off the team. I well, not off the, no, team, not off the team, like out, out, of, the out box. of the box. Ah, I don't. Yeah, me. Because in some that's fucked that's up fun. sense, you shouldn't mess with. You shouldn't mess with the rotation down low. Like, does Pat come out of the like out of the box? Like that. I don't want to say it for. I don't want to speak for Matt because he definitely would be happy for Pat, like taking his job. Like, you'd rather your brother steal your job than somebody else. But man, that's like humiliating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think. Like your brother wins the national championships at Notre Dame. You couldn't win them. He wins his second immediately the fr- weekend after he's starting over you. <laughs> oh shit. Notre Dame already won. On, yeah. On that, Day. Yeah. They are. I mean, we'll talk about that later, but yeah. So I, I had okay. this thought. I had this thought, Jordan. Jordan. Notre Dame. <laughs> no, right, break, breaking news. Breaking news. Uh, 
Play, 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 play. Yep, there we go. Uh, congratulations to Notre Dame 2025 national champs back to back. Uh, first to do it back to back. Well, I guess Virginia kind of technically, right? Yeah, they had that like that gap, the that COVID gap. gap. Yeah, but yeah, so I well, Mickey Mouse. So Virginia, Mickey Mouse. So the first real back to back champ since since God knows when. I think I Hughes maybe did it last, but congratulations yeah. to Notre Dame. Um, but yeah, keep going about Pat Cav. Pat Cav's going to win a national championship with his brother Chris, and then win a PLL championship with his brother Matt. Yeah, that'd be pretty sick. Yeah, Especially I mean that'd, that'd be that'd be pretty sport. sweet, pretty sweet stretch, no doubt about it. That would make him Hall of Fame right away. That would put, like yeah. I don't think I don't think I'm kidding when I say that. If he won. You think if, if Pat Cav didn't play another so if Pat Cav wins a PLL championship this summer and, and a national never, championship and, and well Nat, Natty and a PLL championship same summer never touches a lacrosse stick again Hall of Fame he probably gets like the attackman of the year like named after him too That's not- <laughs> <laughs> Um no but I I, I do think it's interesting because like Pat Cav is like the biggest thing with him ever, like the, the riding like that, like that's hit, mm-hmm. like, you know, he, he's going to get to tough spots. He's going to, you know, take a hit to make a play. He's going to get the ground balls up, but like the riding aspect is where he's like, you know, cause again, like we talk about, you know, are like, what are you the absolute best in the country at? Right. And, and pack might not, he might not be the best goal scorer. He might not be the best feeder. He's up there. Towards right, the right, right. He might not be the very best. He's the very best rider in the country. Like that's for sure. So you you run him out of the box. You kind of lose a little bit of that. So like maybe you put him in for Marcus, you know. And but then then that's a, a tough that's a tough car ride home for Mister Holman. Being like, hey, buddy, I'm 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 sorry, sport, but you know I I don't want anyone to think that I'm giving you you know preferential treatment just because you're my son. Um, or, you know, one, one thing that I've been throwing around in my brain is like you, you throw, you run Pat out of the box because I think that you get more going downhill out of the box with Pat than you would with Marcus. So you run him out of the box, get the possession started going downhill right away, and then you turn the ball over. You can run Marcus off to the box and then just keep Pat down at attack to ride and then just kind of keep switching off that way. So he's like a a, a little mix is he attack? Is he midi? Remember, we used to do that with uh, with Connor Kelly at, at Maryland. No yeah. one ever knew what he was. Right, exactly. So I, you can just do that with Pat Cav. It, it is also weird though, because I would think Marcus. It's crazy because he's he's in MVP talks last year to be like, no, you're going to run out of the box. But he's a better outside shooter than Pat. So like, could he extend the field when when Asher's hanging at five on five? Like, would it be more like useful to have Marcus extending out? Obviously, Pat creates so much with his creativity. His dodging from Max, his feeding ability. Yeah, I, 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 think you, I think you get more of a slide from Pat coming out of the box right away than you would. I, I guess I, what I'm thinking is more of more, like when Asher holds the ball, who's more of a threat from like the top right, like or just as a shooter. Yeah, is it Mark? I don't know. See, like that's the thing. Mark because Asher holds. The, you know what I'm saying? Asher right. holds his guy right there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like. He, I feel like the, the the more that the cannons keep blowing it up, the the less that he can hold the ball. I agree with that. Yeah. Cause I guess the problem was with like, in, I guess, we're, yeah. Cause that was a problem with Lyle, in, the, in my opinion. The cannons do move the ball very well. It's just Asher's body. Like, he got so good. Uh, at- do, that brings up a great point. Does anyone know what's going on? What is he? Is I, 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 yeah. Dukes yeah, was I, right. I, you don't need him. Well, I think, but I it, think he's like done. Dude, hashtag, hashtag Dukes was right. And nobody wants to talk about it. Well, then I, like, 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 like this is something that I haven't even thought about. So I don't even. Because like, I was know. right. I, this is exactly what I said. I said the, the the league does not need Lyle as much as people think that the league needs Lyle. No. So so well, one, I agree with that. But I, I'm talking about like, do we? Uh, well, hold up. I don't agree with that. Like, I, uh, <laughs> Jordan, I, you forgot about him. Like that. That was no, my point. No, well, yeah. So I did forget about him a little bit. But I'm. But I've, I. What I'm asking is like, is he coming back or no? No. no. Yeah, probably not. Huh, crazy. Yeah, I mean, I just think that's at the end of the day, like a lot of the box guys, if you want to play box, go play box. If you want to play field, play field. Like the, the, the thing about the PLL that's great is there's a lot of good players 
with limited spots. So like, if you don't want to play, there's a player that can fill in right away. Might change some schemes, but there's enough talent in, in America. I feel like at this point now with him being gone this long, like I, th- I think that's like now it might do more harm than good. Cause like, then they're just kind of blowing up their entire, we're talking about how to squeeze in Pat Cavanaugh. I'll imagine what the conversation would be like, well, now you got to squeeze in Lyle and Pat Cavs. Now basically you have a whole new, a whole new offensive look. Obviously it's not going to hurt him that bad, but it would just change the entire outlook of the team. I feel like, and I don't know, it's been awfully quiet from the Lyle Thompson news camp. I'll tell you that. You for would, sure. Yeah. You would think that, People would start. I mean, I guess with NLL season still going on, but like you, you would think that people would start wondering if he's coming back. But the fact that like no one's really kind of wondering, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll go as far as to say that hashtag Dukes wasn't wrong. I yeah, not say Dukes was right, but Dukes wasn't wrong. Thank you. That's all I need, honestly. At the end of the day, because I get a lot of hashtag Dukes was wrong, so not being wrong yet, I'll take it. Jordan, you had an interesting point. There is, there might, could you make the argument there's too much family on the countenance? When you're eating shit at the same place in the same home, like you got, you're going to make someone angry. You got like, you could upset a Kavanaugh, you could upset a Holman, you could upset a curse. Like you're, whoa, 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 whoa. Move, moves, ha- no, you can. I mean, you think about all the movie pieces, an Islanian, Brothers I, Fight. I, I, I think that one of Sun's the, uh, one, one of the best things about lacrosse is, you know, you, you, you consider everyone on the team, like, oh, that's my brother. We're brothers. We're brothers for life. You know, I would fucking die for him. (laughs) Yeah, like, uh, dude, like, I so it was so great to play with you. Like, that's my brother. Like, I'll do anything for that guy. And and so I don't think you can ever have too much family on the lacrosse team. So, um, yeah, I mean, if if anything, I I maybe we'll see how it plays out this summer. Uh, but you know, I I think that maybe that's it's a copycat league. So. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, does Brendan O'Neill have a brother anywhere? Like, can, can the outlaws pick someone up? They kind of, we can get the couriers together. He was genetically born in a lab. So I don't think that, I think he was like, kind of like one of those like AI projects. One of those, like, just like made, made in a lab. Just like, how can we form like the best lacrosse player ever? And it was like, this is, this is what we got. And it's just Brendan O'Neill. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think Matt Gibson was probably, or maybe that's what, uh, maybe that's what Ben Reeves is doing his whole yes neurosurgical whatever his his degree is in. Maybe it's just to to create the perfect yes. cross player, put us out of existence. And then moving on to some other teams, uh, I said that I put Pressler. I mean, I'm, I said Pressler's on the hot seat. I put Pseudo on the hot seat. I'm going to put one more coach in the hot seat, and I do not think he had a good draft. Nat uh, Saint Laurent. Okay. Why don't yeah. we gonna start talking about him being on the hot seat? Like, let's let's turn that temperature up right now. So, so one, I don't know if he had the greatest draft because they only, you know, they didn't pick until the third round, so they didn't have a first or second pick. And again, that's on that for where asset management. Um, I, I think that the, you know, I, the, the group chat was hot about it last night. I think, you know, the Levi Anderson pit, like Levi Anderson is, is such a, he's going to be a stud, but I just think when you look at, you know, the, the way that I, I just feel like offensive players don't develop well with the Redwoods. Um, I think that they had, they've, they've always had a lot of, a ton of talent on the offensive side of the ball. And I feel like there are just a lot of guys that just their, their stock starts to tailspin a little bit uh, playing there. So, yeah, I mean, Nat just hasn't really been able to, to figure out a way to get the best out of his guys, e- even, you know, mediocre out of some of his guys. Um, obviously, you know, Ryder's had great seasons with them. Right. Um, you know, Pinnell's been been great, but like. I don't, there, there have just been a lot of guys where it just seems like this guy should be able to be great with this team, but somehow it's just not fitting the right way. Uh, would hate to see that happen for Levi Anderson. I think that, you know, I think that there's, you know, the argument that he would definitely be a better fit for a team like the chaos where you just get, you know, a whole bunch of Canadians. I mean, he's a, he's a British Columbia boy. Uh, I think he's from the Calgary area, big box guy uh, plays a great game. So, you know, at some point, Maybe maybe a fit's not there, and that's kind of where Andy Towers can can bring him in. Even though you know he passed on him right before the Levi Anderson pick, so who knows? But yeah, I think uh, you know Degnan and Levi Anderson, like two big bodies, which have you know we've kind of come to know 
from the Redwoods. It's just a matter of figuring out a way to make it all fit, which I, I would say if it doesn't fit with these two guys, then yeah, maybe, maybe Nat's got to be, that seat's got to be warming up. Ness, it looks like your, your brain's turning right here. Fire away. I don't think they had that bad of a draft for, for, for being third and fourth round. I mean, I feel like they got like a couple guys. My biggest thing is um, when you don't have a pick in the first or second round, you miss out on all the big names they probably needed or could have gotten. Um, I know they moved a lot of pieces around this off season, but when you look up and down their roster, I just don't think it's, I, I think they're going to be in a good spot this year for some reason. I mean, I just, no one, in my opinion, no one made That's because there's a curse on the team. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but I don't even think it's just because of curse. I think it's there's just a lot of talent around them still that we just kind of – we kind of gla- like gloss over Rob Pinnell. Like he's still not one of the most like dominant players in the league. I think him surrounded by all these new pieces and cursed, uh, I think they're always susceptible to like go on a little bit of a run. I agree with you. If they don't have a good year. I think you probably should go. But I Dude, they've, they had, they've, had, they've had talent. What'd you say? They've had talent for years though. Now that they this is, that's, I that's think true, entering yeah. the season, like like uh, here's what I'll, I'll say. I think they needed to address a need at defense. They didn't address a need at defense. They tr- like. Are you going to say right now that it was a smart move to trade back into the draft to get Cole Caster for next season? Maybe like I don't think that's the smartest move. Is Caster? gonna like make her break your time with like the redwoods is he, are you willing to wait a year for him i don't know i, I yeah, that's the more i think about that and, is and, kind of crazy. and you lose your third round pick next year so i'm like i don't really get that from a gm coaching perspective you got levi anderson which i could try kind of see what they're trying to do in the midfield like you got like bertrand from the midfield you're probably gonna run like westberg uh alex simmons from the midfield and i you know how chris gray like is their first round pick basically so like i get that thinking i just don't know how these pieces are going to mix Nat really hasn't shown that he can like coach Canadians from the yeah. midfield box. If this was like Andy Towers' team, I'd be like, okay, this 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 is pretty good. Nat hasn't done anything for me to believe this. Defense they didn't address at all, and then they drafted Chase Erland. Which, sure, if you really think Chase Erland is going to be like the face of like your goal, like of the future for your goaltending, but I didn't love that pick either. I thought it was a great pick. I, I think Chase Erland's one of the Right, but I'm saying like if you think if you think he's gonna come in and, and compete day one, it makes sense. I, but if you're just gonna bet, draft him as a backup for like three years and hope that he he's your face in three years of, of like who your goalie is, I, I don't know. I think he could definitely start week one. I think that might be a position that wasn't as solid as it was in the past for them last year. In my opinion, yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel yeah, like I'm, I'm always I'm I always back and forth on how I feel about Jack Kelly. I think. Uh, yeah, I think Jack Kelly's really good. I think he's really good. I think it's it's a really long summer for him to be really good the entire time. So it's a good pick. Plus, you get the family aspect. Yeah, I guess so. I needed a backup too. I kind of forgot about Troutner on the Atlas. But um, what was what was I just about to say about the Redwoods? To- totally forget. But um, how you always yeah. think they're supposed to be good and they're not? Oh, oh no. So that's what I was going to say. Where where it's like. I feel like I feel like making the Cole Kastner pick, like you gotta you gotta be sure that he can't make more money going to play basketball in Europe after next year. Yeah. Like you you have to be like damn sure because like we, we we've seen it with Pat's Spen- like I don't know. Like I feel like the switch from guys who like want to go from lacrosse to football. You know, and like maybe, maybe there's a from the the last I heard, like uh, Bernhard's got a bunch of injuries from playing foot. So like, who knows if if Jared Bernhard will be able to to come back um, for lacrosse? But like going from lacrosse to basketball, just like the physical demand of it is so much less. Like, dude, like like Pat Spencer doesn't have to spend his entire summer just getting hacked by a bunch of. <laughs> fucking maniacs with six foot poles anymore right and like he's in the nba which is like sick but like even if he was in the g league it, like just in the g league and, and didn't have his two-way it's like hey like would you rather make 
like that money playing in a, a minor league basketball where you don't have to, you know, your entire arm isn't one giant bruise anymore. Um, and obviously Cole Kastner's, you know, playing defense. So he's the one kind of doling it out, but even still like, you know, do the physical demand, the money, like, I, I don't know. I feel like you have a, a much better chance of getting the football guys to come back to the cross. Cause they're like, all right, like training camp suck. Like I just spent an entire week just banging my head against a, a wall. Like the basketball guys, you, you kind of lose them for good. Yeah, I agree. And like the whole like NFL, can NFL players play in the NBA? Can NBA players play in the NFL? What a win. What a win for the lacrosse debate. Lacrosse players can do anything. <laughs> like yeah. percentage wise, one kid wanted to play NBA basketball. 100% of lacrosse people have ever played basketball that like tried in the NBA. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're, one, we're one for one so far. Um, we're like two We're like two for three in lacrosse and the third one was an injury. For third football, one was I mean. uh, So, so we're going with Docs, Chris Hogan, and well, Bernhard, Bernhard made it. To, he made it to the league, so I guess we could chalk that up as a three for three. He 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 played some snaps for the Falcons and preseason. Doc, Docs though didn't Docs Docs only did Patriots mini camp. But yeah. just moving on here, uh, let's talk about the biggest steal of the draft. Did anyone stand out to you in one of the later rounds, two, three, four? That was just an absolute steal for where they, where they got. I can take the lead on this if you guys want. I think Michael Bohm. Michigan attackman for the water dogs was just a great dog. Pick. Yeah, I think. And you're also getting a Michigan guy. You draft him in May. Michigan's a different breed in May. We'll hop into that in a little bit. But yeah, I think, I think he's an absolute dog. I think Bill Tierney actually did a fairly good job with his first draft, getting Brandau and Bohm and then kind of figuring out what he wants to do. Like, do you put Liam Burns up uh, with like Kenny Brower or with Hudgens? So I, I think Bill Tierney for his first draft did pretty well. Good. Pretty good. I think. TJ Malone was a steal of the draft for the Whip Snakes. Um, yeah, great pick. I mean, they 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 kind of reloaded there with him. I think he's unbelievable. I know Dukes has been high on him all year, but I mean, he's another guy that's kind of just I think in the upper echelon of just being able to like facilitate an offense. I mean, he's him and Brandau were like the the two guys all the season this year. I would just see the craziest assist numbers next to their names. I'd just be like, Jesus Christ. Um, so I I think Malone's nasty. Him slipping into the third round, I think, was a surprise. So, congrats to the Maryland Whip Snakes for getting him. Yeah, kind of a scumbag move by Ness there. My first podcast back in a while, and he seals my answer. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I would have either gone TJ Malone or you know, and we just talked about it. Like, I, I think Levi Anderson. If if net like yeah, Levi Anderson on his own. So let's just like take the the redwoods penchant for you know kind of not finding fits for certain guys in their in their offense out of the equation levi anderson on his own as a talent total seal of the draft to get him where he is um guy guys just a he, he's a playmaker he's a goal scorer uh, they don't grow on trees but i guess they grow in calgary this was this isn't a steal of the draft this is i think a perfect placement in the draft but can i just talk about sneaky good pick Ross Scott makes a ton of sense to be on the chaos. That is like, he, he, like he kind of plays similar to Brian Minicus. I, I, uh, I was going to say the kind of like, it's, it's almost it like, a, like, like a, it's, it's not cause I, I don't want to disrespect Ross Scott, but, it, but it's almost like a, we have a Brian Minicus at home, but like now it's like, okay. I actually, okay. I agree. I agree. I, but but, but, but I, I'm not saying that Ross Scott is the at home version of Brian. right. Like, right. I, I think I think that they're just the, they're the same guy. Like it's got like you could okay. go ahead and and switch their jerseys in the middle of the game, and no one would notice. Because I think the I think the jury's still out on like who is better, only because Minikis obviously went off in his rookie year. So I'm not taking anything away from him. But Ross Scott, I I think is very good. I don't know how he'll be in the league, but the fact you could run one of them out of the box. And you can do a two man game with the like the two of them. Scary. Yeah, yeah. I, I think very, that's- very shifty. Uh, better just make sure that all the seven other teams in the league uh, trainers tape up those ankles pretty good before those games. Now, last thing about the draft, uh, someone's villain arc just started after last night because uh, thirty two teams, thirty two people were picked ahead of him. I would like to see which uh, I would like to see which college player remembers all thirty two names. Can we, I would like to record to get an interview with that guy who remembers all 32 guys picked before him um, in, in the four round 18 draft. Um, so who was doubted last night? Who was snubbed? Who didn't get picked that she thinks could be a uh, weapon this summer? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll run point on this one. Uh, and speak like he'll definitely be a villain about it. He'll definitely uh, talk so much shit because it's what he does best besides scoring goals. Uh, where Peyton Cormier. And so here's the thing: like I don't know. So I don't know necessarily. I wouldn't call it like a snub. Right. Like, like, I don't think Peyton Cormier got snubbed by being undrafted. I think that he's definitely going to end up with the team this summer. Um, the only thing about him is like, I don't know. Again, I, I wish I had a better vocabulary right now because I could find a better word for it. I, it's not that you would waste a draft pick on Peyton Cormier. I don't think it would be a waste of one, but I think it, it wouldn't be the greatest usage of one because when you put Cormier into your offense, when you, Playing in the pros, like that just means that you're getting your top two midfielders to get pulled, right? Yeah. Because, you know, we, we've seen it before where teams have tried to short him in college and, you know, he, he's just been able to go off against that. I think that the shorts at the pro level, like you're, you're, you're going up against the best in the world at that. So I don't think that shorts will necessarily have too difficult of a time keeping up with him in the crease like that, which means that you can afford to then double pull the midfield. Um, unless you're like running Cormier out of the box, which I guess you would, but either way. Um, so I, I don't, I get why he wasn't drafted. I get not spending a pick to get him. Um, but I think he, his phone should be lighting up the moment that undrafted guys can start to get signed. Yeah. I could see him going to the chaos like trying to pick in for like that cliche spot. Did you guys, did you guys see that? I mean, there's no like actual reports about it, but I saw a lot of people saying like, there's a chance he might just be playing box. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I was going to say is he could just be a box guy. That's what I personally think. I mean, I think it's, I agree with Jordy that, you know, like I think the word waste is probably not the one we're trying to use, but like, yeah, we're not vocab. Yeah. Also, let yeah. me, let me just say, let me just yeah. say this. Let me say this for Cormier too. Like if he wants to, if he was going to be a fucking top five pick, he would be like, oh, I'm going to the field. But since he wasn't, he's probably like, oh, I don't even want to play in that league. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting. We'll see. I mean, I think he's just so nasty at finishing the ball just from kind of anywhere on the side of the net there. And he can obviously do it inside. Um, I just love a big body like him. So, I mean, I'm, if he if he's going to be in the PLL, I think he's going to make a big difference. But I have a weird feeling he's not going to be. Yeah, we don't have an, enough beefy boys out there. Yeah, like, yeah, I completely agree. Got Asher, Dyson yeah, just got drafted. Asher, like, well, well, Dyson's not really a I Dyson's not beefy. like. I don't think he's beefy. I don't oh. think he has a six pack. No, he's, a beefy, he's a beefy. He's like he a five just, layer. He's like a five layer Frito burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Am I thinking of of the wrong Dyson Williams? Dude, I'm with you, uh, Jordy. I don't think like like Peyton Cormier is beefy. Like Dyson Williams is not beefy, dudes. He's just bi- like he's like big as shit though. But he's definitely not beefy. He's got. I'm looking at his pictures right now. He's not, be- he's not beefy, but I think he- I think of him as beefy. I think I mean, well, yeah, but you, you've been on you've been on this weight loss journey. You're looking just slim and handsome as shit over there, Duke. So you think everyone looks beefy now? I thought I I honestly thought that I think it might be like the 51 throwing me off. Yeah, it's a big boy That's number fair. for sure. I, I I really think it is. Maybe. I'm not gonna lie. I'm looking at some pictures. I couldn't have been more wrong. Hand up, but I still see him as beefy. I I, I won't be able to unsee it. I might be wrong. Did he used to be beefier? Yeah, I think I found another picture where his pinion practice looks pretty tight, and his. I'm going to send it to you guys. He might have been a little bigger in the past. I'm going to try to find out when this. I'm just scrolling through Google images of just Dyson Williams. Welcome sure back to America's cool. favorite body shaming. <laughs> yeah, I found this one photo where this kid looks pretty fucking fat. <laughs> this is why Dyson Williams. This is why Dyson Williams. Fell down the draft boards last night. <laughs> this one picture from a 2020 practice. <laughs> oh that my fun. god, that's so funny. Um, but yeah, I I think that there's a couple people that got snubbed that like I'll just touch on really quick. Roy Meyer, I was hyping on so much. He was like a top two pull in the draft for me. Um, he he's the one that hit the three blind mice celebration. Do you think that that hurt his draft stock? Uh, I'm scrambling for anything. No, I, 
I can't imagine. Um, but what a great sell it was. We can talk we can talk about that. Yeah, it was great. Hey, Matt, anyway. Capping your college and, career. And, that's and I good. think if I think if anything, like that's that's kind of one where he'll end up as a you know, he'll get picked up by a team. Um, and I think PLL social accounts will kind of play a heavy role in negotiating for him to end up on the team because a guy who can bust out a celly like that uh, in a conference championship game, like, you know, that he's going to be good for some Instagram clips over the summer. So yeah. And I think uh, he's really PLL good. PLL socials, but you kind of just need to keep growing everything. Keep getting those impressions. Uh, three blind mice. Celly gets picked up by the Barstool main account. That was me. I, Come on, I got eyes everywhere. Little 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 inside job, little inside job there by Dukes, but you get us, you know, that that's gonna get impressions for the league. So um not saying that there's gonna be not not a conspiracy, but listen, you, sometimes you need to put a showman in there and and he's got that flair for sure. Yeah, I think and I also just think that <clears throat> pure vacuum on the ground, kind of piscino ish without the hype. I think that the three blind micelli kind of maybe I see what you're saying with like the PLL highlights, like the like PLL will love him, like get that. But I think he's a guy that should have been drafted that I don't know if coaches saw that, like that clip and we're like, fuck this guy. Um, but he was on, he was everybody's like big three LSM. Uh, some other ones. I thought Chase Yeager was, is like one of the best short stick team minis in the country out of UVA. Good set of hair. Um, Will Mark, I thought would be drafted. LIU to Q's always talked about would DM the, the account, like asking me a barstool athlete. Uh, I think he's he, he's big on being doubted. So I think some team will pick him up. Uh Scott Cole from Lehigh is another one that I yeah. think will, will, is, will come in. Yeah, I think he'll come in and be a factor in the league. And then I have Cormier. Naso will get picked up maybe by someone like the Cannons or the Water Dogs. Last but not least. My favorite midfielder that nobody talks about in the country is Aiden Denanza. I think of him as a bigger Joe Lacasio, someone that just gets the offense humming, uh, gets gets the slides coming to him, moves the ball. Doesn't have to be as big of a factor from the outside or as an as an initial uh, like like it doesn't have to be a point producer on that Duke offense um, because of all the talent around them. But I think he's someone that would be very good in the PLL and is a threat. So. Those yeah. are my yeah, I mean, snubs. Tough, we, we, we talk about it all the time, but you know, there's, there's eight teams, right? There, there's minimal roster spots. Like these are, it's, it's so hard to crack the league um, that there are going to be a lot of really, really good players who uh, are going to be working in an office this summer and just going to have to keep hitting the wall throughout the summer. Someone gets hurt. You're, you're ready to get called up, but um, yeah, it's, it's just tough, tough to, tough to crack a lineup if you don't get that shot right away. So, um, I mean, hopefully, you know, I, I think all those guys that you mentioned, they should at the very least be training camp guys. Yes. Uh, and, and then it's just, again, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta really make a difference there to, to get a shot because we've seen plenty of great players make it to training camp. And then, you know, that that's, that's the last we see of them. Maybe they're coaching the club team in the summer or something. Yeah. It's it, it's a Kyle Thornton. I saw Kyle Thornton. Was someone, he was getting clowned. But PLL Nationals was trying to like call him like, "Oh, why aren't you in the league?" Kyle Thornton was just like, "I got fat and I wanted to hang out with my friends. That's like that's why I got cut." And you know that'll happen to some people. So I think that you could either be Kyle or you could be working out, being ready for your spot. Like you, you just got to pick and choose. You got to be ready for your moment. Uh, you kind of got to decide if you want to stay in shape. And oh, like Ronan Jacoby, someone that didn't get drafted, stayed ready, stayed working out, kept shooting. Went to the PL Champ Series. Now he has a spot at the midfield for the Atlas. We're working to get on the 19-man roster, so good for him. Before we get into college across, we're going to move on. I wanted to ask you guys a little bit about the NLL box, uh, kind of on the fly. It's the Bandits versus the Firewolves in the championship, but before we even dive into that, so it turns out that Austin Stotts, um, I can't even think of the guy's name uh, that, that he hit because I'm not a box across guy. I don't want the NLL people coming at me um, like you can't talk. Uh, I, I feel I feel bad because he's a uh, he, he's a St. Joe's guy and he played for the Wings for the longest time. Um, wow, really put me on the spot here. I can good, look friend the, good friend of the program too. Really like the guy. Um, why why am I blanking on his name right now? Mm. Got it. I'll find. No, now I feel like a dirtbag. So now I'm going to have to find it. I just type in Austin Stotts, scumbag. 
<laughs> uh, Anthony Joplin. Anthony jo- yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's, I mean, great guy. You know, I, I'd imagine he's talking a little bit of shit, right? Because he, he's mentioned before in his, uh, actually his post-game presser was awesome because he said, you know, he's like, yeah, I, I guess Audie's like a little upset that I, I ended a season the past three years in a row because he spent the past couple of years with Colorado. Now he's with Albany uh, Seals, you know, just, just going down to all those teams. So I'm sure he was definitely talking shit. Uh, Austin Stotts just a, a completely unhinged human being. Uh, just it, unhinged. it turns out it turns out that the guy that allegedly bit off the finger of Matt Gaudet is a scumbag. Breaking news. Yeah, so just un- – and here's the thing. The original cross-check to the face, f- fine. Yeah. Like, here's the thing. If guys are going to be talking shit, you might be talking shit to an, an unhinged lunatic who's going to end up cross-checking you, trying to get you in the teeth. Whatever. That Like, that is what it is. If it w- would have just been the initial cross-check to the face, I would have been like, yeah, like – like Austin Stotts is, is a, is a crazy person, but like, whatever, like it is what it is. And people, Oh, it's box across. Stop being such a pussy about it. Like go, like, you know, fuck off, dude. Like keep fucking voting for Trudeau. You fucking idiots. Um, but the, the cross check, the cross check to the back of the neck as, as joke, as he's already on the ground, like that's where it's like, okay, right. like, you've gone from being a dirt bag on the field to just being a, a scumbag human in general. Like, like there, there's just so many times where it's like, dude, like, like that, that stick is a weapon. And, and like, I don't know, like you're going to get so many, like, I, I don't know. It, it just seems, it seems crazy that there's not as much of an uproar to be like, this guy fucking sucks. He probably shouldn't be playing lacrosse. Like he probably needs some help um before he gets back on a lacrosse field but it's like i don't know i I guess it's it's tough for some people to say that about stats yeah i mean he as a guy who's had his fair share of late hits in his career uh, (laughs) there is a code of ethics um between the late hitters at least the good ones uh you can't basically knock someone out with a cross shape of the head and then like joy said jump on his neck and i think he threw two shots when he was on the ground there yeah, I mean, I, I hate to be the guy that's like kick him out of the league and he needs help. He totally needs help. I mean, he's – that's like a lot of anger. Um, and it would be like if football players just had like metal bars and they could do that to each other after plays. Like it would be psychotic. It's almost like taking a helmet and hitting someone with it because it is like a piece of equipment. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just an absolute nuts move. I saw the video. I'm almost like 100% sure the guy who got cross-checked is out when he's going down. He like yeah. falls, like his body language is just like it goes like limp and just kind of it was I mean you're definitely getting the face mask back in the back in the jib, so that doesn't feel and, and here's the thing, like uh, if if he's got a lot of anger, like whatever, like fine, that that's cool. Like you can play the game with a lot yeah. of anger. Like and, and again, like I, I've already said, and like I, I've got no problem with guys who play the game on the line who occasionally like step over the line like yeah. that that like that that's just the way that the game is like you you need like if if you're going to play on the line and you need guys like that every once in a while you're going to go over it there's a difference between going over it and just having a complete lack of control where like someone's going to get seriously injured because you're a scumbag so step yeah. over the line every once in a while but don't like can't run no. out. You can't sprint past the line. This would also yeah. be a non-story if the Gaudet shit didn't cut. Like, if everyone didn't know about the Gaudet stuff and, like, the training camp and getting kicked out of the PLL, like, nobody would be saying, like, kick him out of the league. It's just when you – once it's a mistake, twice is a habit, the third time is a pattern. And, like, like – or th- tw- whatever, some order. Yeah, like and that. I mean, he's had his – It's issues. some bullshit he's, like that. And he's, he's just – like, He's had his fair share of issues and shit, like, growing up in the game and everything, too. So, like, it's, it's not like it's, like, any secret that he's, like – complete lack of control um but i don't know he's a really good player so i guess you kind of get away with it with being that good which is kind of like a testament to like how good he is because people just keep giving him another shot which like if you want to know how good of a lacrosse player is do the worst thing you could possibly do and see if a team will still sign you (laughs) like you'll you'll know you're worth real quick yeah 
Yeah. Um, but getting back to the another, actual – another, another clip too. Uh, it was uh, – I think that this also happened at Albany. Um, so it was uh, Halifax. Uh, I forget exactly who it was. It was uh, – either way, guy, guy on Halifax – who played his college ball at Albany playing against the Firewolves uh, goes into the penalty box. I guess an Albany fan is, is just unloading on him from the stands and he goes to run out. He tries to jump into the stands. We almost had a malice in the palace in the NLL, uh, but he, he wasn't able to get himself over the glass. And then by that time, like the refs had already like pulled him down. So it, it never happened. But um, all, all I'll say right there is uh, absolute coward on the Albany fan side like it's if, if you want to talk that much shit go ahead but you got to meet the guy in the mid like if he's gonna come up and try to get over <laughs> to get at you you at the very least need to come down and like i don't say you don't have to go over the glass and fight him. <laughs> like, we've seen that before with uh, the philadelphia flyers there was a flyers fan that jumped into the penalty box to fight ty domi this was uh I don't know, early 2000s I'm not saying you got to go that far and jump into the box to try to fight the guy, but at the very least, you got to go down and meet him at the glass. How that, bad do you, you want it? You already have the you already have the high ground in that, but like the fact that you didn't even go down to meet him when he's trying to get up over the glass, like <laughs> that's, that's a tough look. Yeah, that's tough. That, that, that's what that's you, a tough, tough. I I think it's so funny that Joe Keegan right now, Joe Keegan's like little like you know those the the red blooded Americans like profile picture. Oh yeah, he's yeah. doing that for NLL player. Like I, I love watching the NLL. Brutal Twitter accounts. Uh, talk about people that seemingly hate their sport. And what you said about like the Trudeau thing awesome, is so awesome. Crazy. Game, awesome game. Terrible fans. Yeah, and the people that are like, man, like, like this is why box across is so much better. Like, and then they get like sensitive over Whitney's tweet. Uh, they're, they're the same yeah. people. Like, yeah. they, but box, box is tough. And then they get mad at like like Whitney's tweet about like the Bruins and the and the Maple Leafs, but I don't know the I, the, the NLL fans angered me so much. But I watched the games this weekend; they were fantastic. I will be tuning into the finals, um, Buffalo versus Albany. I don't even know who I want to win. Albany, from what I understand, is a very fun young team. Buffalo is obviously the team that's gotten it done the past couple of years, um, or have been at the championship level the past couple of years. I just um, have way too much love for Ian McKay to ever root against Buffalo. Same. Uh, and also, I know Buffalo's yeah. Buffalo is such a stick time, and I'm sure that Albany's fun too. But uh, that, that I mean that that's a pretty it's a pretty cool little setup there for the. I mean, how how far is that trip from Buffalo to Albany? Yeah, that's gonna be like a home game for Buffalo. It's every game is a home game. That guy Chase Fraser Fraser, however you pronounce it, played at Newman. He's three baby. We used to absolutely roll them by like 30 goals, and one day he scored a goal on me from legitimately like 10 yards above the restraining box. And it's still to this day, like the fastest laser I've ever seen to the corner. And dude, like, dude, dude, the school that, that chase Frazier played at, like, like we're talking, like you've got guys in practice who probably can't catch and throw. Oh, I know. Yeah. Uh, but like, like this is the t- like, they'll lose every game, like 16 to five and chase Frazier has at least four goals, one assist. So he I actually probably five goals. I was yeah, talking. Was I was talking about uh, on the show that I'm now help, like helping out with, like the the P- Pelkey show we recorded and we talked. Like I, I got to have like my little Cabrini minute, and I was like, shout out to my crease dive host Matt Nestler Cabrini. Like they have a six stat. Like you guys haven't lost like 26 years. What is it exactly? It's I think it's 26, maybe 29. Like and then games. I took some unnecessary shots at like Newman. I I, I said that, but in like Cabrini's playing like St. Mary's School of the Blind. I took some shots at the teams near conference that did not deserve it. And on <laughs> top of that, you going off Ian McKay. I'd now like to take this the time to apologize. I was making fun of Pacino and Albany, saying that UVM was a national powerhouse in a downward spiral. And I immediately after knew. Ian McKay is going to come for me. Ian, I'm taking the time now to apologize. I'm sorry. Good luck this weekend. UVM was a powerhouse when you were there. That's all you can ask for. Yeah, that's all you can ask for. Um, But, yeah, that's really all I got on the NLL front because if I talk any more about the NLL, I'll get the fucking profile pictures coming at me being like, (laughs) why DKB? You don't know ball. This is why we need a fucking NLL podcast. You guys stink. Um... (laughs) Let's talk a little college lax and shout out to DraftKings. Just, I want to talk about the winners really quick with odds. Odds are subject to change. Bet responsibly. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Um, Notre Dame is the runway favorite right now. 
minus 135 to win the entire tournament. Followed up by Duke plus 400, Hopkins plus 500, Virginia plus 1,000, Penn State plus 2,000, Princeton plus 3,000, so on and so forth, all the way down to Sacred Heart, who's the longest shot. Giants, if you had to take a stab at this right now, just give me one team value-wise that you want that you think could win it all. I can also give you the odds of a team that I did not name. I think it's Virginia. I mean, I think that's at least odds-wise. This fucking guy, man. I can't even. <laughs> I get. I tried to give the elder. He's trying to beat you. He's trying to beat you. He's he's got my whole fucking flow. <laughs> this is, this bar for bar now. I, tr- I tried to give it that second. Jordy and I kind of looked at each other. I was like, all right, I'm up. Um, I think it's Virginia just, just value-wise. I mean, they're so fucking good. And plus 1,000, that's good value. I know Jake Malasek probably loves that. Uh, hopefully, he's talking to all the coworkers he talked to and trying to get him back on board. Um but uh, yeah, I, that's that's my pick. They could go and run, and like Dukes and I have been talking about all year. It's if Noons can play his game, the Virginia Cavaliers can win the national championship. But if he doesn't even come close, I don't think they stand a chance. I mean, it sucks when your goalies are kryptonite, but that's that's where they're at right now. It's it basically relies all on him, no pressure. Yeah, I mean, I, I know Virginia has been on a on a skid here, but like. At the end of the day, like they're Virginia, like they, Virginia only loses so many games per year, and there's a good chance that they already hit their quota on that. Um, so you know, I, I think that you know that May rolls around, tournament rolls around, like this is like Virginia's like, all right, let's let's flip the switch kind of moment. Um, really hard to flip the switch after you lose like four games in a row, but especially after getting waxed by Notre Dame, I, I think that Notre Dame is it, it makes sense why they're clearly the favorite in this tournament. No one's playing even remotely as good a ball as Notre Dame right now. Like there are just so many teams who are just really, really like, like Notre Dame is peaking right now. And like everyone else is in the shitter. Um, So it's, it's a really weird dynamic going into this tournament. Um, I mean, I I do see it shaking out Notre Dame, Virginia. Uh, But if there was another team in this bracket, that I could see kind of making, making things interesting. I think, I think Princeton's just playing great right now. I think, um, you know, you see what, yeah, you see what they're doing. Uh, I Ivy league tournament, um, you know, King just like, like they've got guys who, uh, they, they have motors on them, energy plays, uh, who, who had, who had the one was it King who had the, um, just run it running out the clock ends up getting like triple team behind the net, just kind of slinks his way through everything, buries a dagger. Uh I forget exactly who it was, but either way. I think it might have been Maxie. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There, there we go. Um, but yeah, so you got you know that that's a team where I think that they're gonna get past Maryland in the first round. You go up against Duke, it's it's not like Duke is impenetrable to to letting teams kind of run things up on them a little bit so you get by that then you run into virginia like they've, they've got a long they've got a tough road ahead of them to get it done but they had a tough road ahead of them in the ivy league tournament and they were able to get that done so uh, if i wasn't going virginia then i'd go princeton yeah i'm going this is this is from a pure gambling mindset you're not gonna get a better price on notre dame get them now i got them earlier in the year I think at minus 135, this is the best price that you can get them at. If you're looking to bet them on the championship game, just get them now. Another team that I think you want to take a stab at if it's not Notre Dame, look at Penn State plus 2,000 because if they beat Notre Dame, same thinking. This is like their odds will shoot up if they get past Notre Dame. Um, I think value-wise, that's kind of my eyes, but from a gambling advice perspective, Notre Dame. Jordy, I have a take that I want to get by you that I said on the last podcast to Nestler, and I firmly believe it. Oh, why not? Notre Dame is head and shoulders above everyone else right now. It's not even close. There's not. It's it's. There's levels to this shit. There's there's tier A, and then a dot pile of shit, and there's tier two. <laughs> Nobody can even come close to Notre Dame's level right now because of their production from the midfield. Jordy, this team right now, if they didn't lose to Georgetown in overtime and Georgetown didn't win their Super Bowl. We would be talking about Notre Dame being the best team of all time, and we'd be talking about them being better than the 2022 Maryland team. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess you could. I don't, I don't see why you couldn't 
make that case. They'd be what? Th- so they'd be 13 and 0. They'd be coming off of being reigning champs. They'd be ACC champs. Um, they'd be beating the shit out of Duke and Virginia. But, you know, we kind of, you know, that, that 2022 Maryland team, I think, I think when they played Virginia in the regular season, they beat them up pretty good. Right. But, yeah. but okay. But to be able to do that to both Virginia and Duke in the same weekend, um, yeah, I mean they, they kind of be right up there. How many games did they did uh that Maryland team end 18. up winning? Eighteen. Okay, yeah. So then you got one, two, three. Yeah. So I mean they'd be looking at seventeen and zero. Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean you have you have great midfielders. You have the best goalie in the country. You have best goalie of all time. Best college goalie of all time. If they win, um, to, to work on one not- or two. <laughs> Should be, should be should be in the conversation. I don't. I just threw that at you. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> He's up there in the conversation, but I, I'm sure that there's. I don't know. I, I'd have to go back. We'd, we'd have to do that thing where we just start naming names and then just, just based off of that and being like, okay, yeah, they're like the they're greatest of all time, Tavorton. <laughs> I, I don't see why he shouldn't be in the conversation besides the fact that towards on hates goalies. So right. Ness, maybe you can kind of just, uh, you can protest outside of their, their main headquarters. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, why wouldn't they be in that conversation if they'd be, but, but they lost to Georgetown. So they won't be in that conversation. So it's all hypothetical. And this is all just in like Dukes's little fairy tale land, but had they not lost that game, then yes, they're in that. Best right. of all I, cause, cause going off that, I do think they're better than the 2022 Maryland team. I, I think it's a conversation that people, I, I think, have. I think that those two teams play. If those two teams play, I don't know that Maryland defense was great. Take I it. think, I think Bernhardt, Bernhardt probably Best wasn't on it. Oh, that was with Nauskas. Okay. With Nauskas, Donville, Khan, DeMeo, <clears throat> Molliver, Long, Murphy, Brennan. Loaded. Don't get me wrong. Can I give you a little tidbit, Jordy? Go ahead. N- Notre Dame did play that year, the year that they missed the tournament. Notre Dame lost 11 to 9. And I would say that this team is better than that team. I know that's not always like the math is equal, but yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, it happened in the conversation, but again, they they lost to Georgetown, so I don't know what you want me to say. Well, that was Georgetown Super Bowl. Do you remember that? You can't, <laughs> like, it's pretty. It's pretty tough to like, like, like you're playing someone's Super Bowl in February. I mean, you're you're rainy. Oh, <laughs> I know. fucking. Automatic ads make me sick. NCAA website, clean it the fuck up. Um, you're the you're the reigning national champs. You're gonna get everyone's Super Bowl, right? And they they've mostly handled business. Um, yeah, uh, I think. I, but we'll get, dive in game by game. Last take, I want to get on you because I haven't talked to you in a while. Fire Brescia, you in or out? I think I got to be in, right? Because yeah. you you get rid of Mets Bauer. Um, like I, I, I don't see things getting any better for them. Like he has so much talent. You get like the number, you get a top three recruiting class every single year. Uh, and the fact that you still can't piece it together, I think. And you know what? I, I think that Coach Bresci has done enough in his career that you don't fire him. But but I think eventually you'd be like, hey, like coach, like, listen, it was a great run. Um gonna have to just if you could step down that would be great just resign buddy 10 and 24 yeah. since he won a national championship in acc play yeah so i i, I think it's time i i wouldn't say fire breshy but i think that it's time for breshy to, to uh resign. to to yeah to step down now let's dive into the weekend games when you're listening Boy, to this so here here is a, a a part of dad life that i is is getting me so i don't know if i'm going to be able to stick around game you're by fine. game I, I do you're have fine. to go pick up the baby from daycare um but speaking of picking up the babies from daycare i'll i'll hang on until ness gets back on the line he's picking up a charger right here so a little peek behind the curtain for anyone who's listening 
to the podcast right now and not watching it on the platforms that it's available. But uh, as if you were watching it, you'd see that Ness is not in the chat right now. He's got to go get a charger. Uh, so electric bill going to go up this month because we got a lot of podcasting to do. Let's let's just go through your picks then game by game while Nest is gone. Okay. Albany, Albany Sacred Heart, who you got winning that one? Uh, Dane Train. Virginia St. Joe's. So here's the thing. I fucking love St. Joe's. They play so good. They're a Philly team. Got a lot of local guys on there. But it's Virginia. So I, I, I'm rooting for St. Joe's. I think it's going to be a tight game, kind of similar to what they did against Yale last year. But at the end of the day, like I just think Virginia squeaks it out. Yeah, I think it's Virginia all the way. I think they're kind of kind of – going to kind of smack St. Joe's minus four and a half and taking Virginia. I think Schellenberger's last game at clock. Give me uh, Shelly in Virginia, Duke, Utah, uh, Duke. Yeah. Duke's going to smack. I have Duke minus six and a half in that one. Um, let's keep going. Michigan, Denver, Michigan's actually favored in this one, <sighs> but it's at Denver. Yep. Altitude. Altitude gonna be a bit of an issue there. Uh Michigan's playing good ball right now. You want to play best ball? Playing great ball. Michigan, I mean, back to back Big Ten champs. Can't take that away from them. Uh yeah, somehow they heat up in May. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Michigan in this one. Princeton, Maryland. Um, night game I'm, Saturday night. I'm I'm going Tigers, and I don't know why Maryland's even in the tournament. I have Maryland, no bad losses. Maryland plus one and a half. I love and let's just zoom through Sunday. Lehigh Hopkins. You think Lehigh can pull this off? I think that Lehigh can pull it off. I think uh, shout out to Will Scudder, first year uh, head coach. Uh, I think he's got the boys humming. I think that uh, Hopkins is is the better team, but I don't know. You know, it's, it's still like, can you trust them to get the job done? So uh, I, I would love to see Lehigh go down there and – pull out a big win. So I'm going Lehigh. It's, it's not my, uh, the pick I'm the most confident in, but I got to ride with, if, if I'm not going to be able to take in good faith, St. Joe's over Virginia, I'm going to have to ride with Lehigh over hop Crawley revenge game. And then there's two more games that I just want to get your final for Georgetown, Penn state. Uh, give me the Nittany lions playing great ball right now. Yep. Led by led by one of Tam the Brody. best LSMs in the country. Ryan O'Connor, uh, Tambo has his seat. Cool down. Cool He's down. Good. Cool down a little bit. Yep. Brush is up. Tabroni's down. Syracuse Towson. I kind of like Towson in this one. Uh, I just got uh, Evan Malloy's therapist in this one. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. Final four. Give it to us. Uh, we are going to go Notre Dame. Fuck. You know what? I, I so I, I I think I do have to go Syracuse in that one. I think that that's an, an Evan Malloy revenge game, and I I like. Give me Spelina. Give me Spelina coming to Philly for uh, the final four. So give me Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Syracuse, uh, Virginia, and Princeton. I like. Tigers are back. I like. Um, Ness, you missed it, but I, we had to go through my picks real quick because I got to go pick up the baby from daycare. So, boys. Jordy, thank go, you. That's oh, going to do it for me. Great to hear all you guys. Uh, great to see you too. Can you give guys, it to us? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to give it to you now. Keep it for the back end. Put it in your pocket. Uh, boys, what what a weekend we have ahead of us here. Saturday, Sunday, 12 o'clock through, you know, last game will probably wrap up around 9 p.m. Eastern. It is going to be an unbelievable weekend of lacrosse, uh, and it's just getting started for an incredible summer. So get ready early and often. And in the meantime, we'll be keeping it low to high till the day we die. Stick around for the rest of these picks. Thank you, Jordy. Thank you, Jordy. Great. Great to hear from Jordy. Great to have him back on the podcast. Um, if you're not watching on YouTube, you better better get subscribed. We got Jordy's picks from the weekend, a little bit of an analysis. Ness, I'll just go through them with me and you, um, with the spreads and everything. St. Joe's, Virginia. Virginia's minus four and a half. What's the play? I think Virginia rolls. Uh, I like the four and a half a little bit, but I think Virginia's pissed. They lost four in a row. They kind of maybe knew they didn't need to win any of those games, and I think that can always play a little bit of a factor when you're not playing back against the wall across. They kind of were like, I doubt they were having conversations like, oh, we don't need these games, but in the back of their heads, they probably knew they didn't need them. Now yeah. they need it. Now they can't lose. Give me Virginia minus four and a half. Yeah, Virginia minus four and a half. Shelly's last game at clock. 
I think that plays a factor. Virginia also lost to some really good teams. Uh, yeah. It turns out that the Notre Dame is a very good team. They shouldn't be like looked at as like, wow, they can like, they're not playing good ball because they couldn't beat Notre Dame. St. Joe's hasn't played Notre Dame last time I checked. So yeah, I have Virginia in this one. I have Virginia pretty convincingly. Same with this one. Duke minus six and a half against Utah. Utah scores a lot of goals. They haven't placed, faced a team like Duke. Uh, I think Duke kind of waxes them. I have Duke minus six and a half. Ness, what's your plan this? Looks like we're riding on the same page there. I'd love to take the Utah boys. I'd love to take the six and a half with a lot of goals in, in May. But we saw, we've seen this story before. You know, teams come in, they sneak in, they go against a powerhouse, they're getting six, seven goals, and uh, they lose by 13, 14. Um, I'm not saying it's gonna, they're gonna lose by 13, 14, but I think they lose by more than six and a half. I think they lose by 13, 14. Uh, <laughs> Princeton, Maryland, Maryland plus one and a half. I'll take the Jersey boys. I mean, I have a really weird thing that's going to bite me in the ass, and Maryland's going to show us why they were supposed to be in the tournament. For anyone not watching, I just did air quotes. Um, I, I, I kind of agree with Jordy. They didn't have the best resume, so who knows how much they deserve to be there. However, they're dangerous. Um, but I think Princeton's playing really good right now. I think that's important. I think I admitted the other episode I might have slept on them a little bit this year, so I'm awake on Princeton, and I'm taking the Tigers. Hey, at least you're awake for, on Princeton now. Uh, that's a night game. We're, then we're going to dive into Sunday. What a great weekend for lacrosse. Seriously, oh, yeah. like just going to be loaded back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, Sunday, 12 p.m., Lehigh, Hopkins, Hopkins, minus four and a half. What do you think? Over-under is 21 because that's what I'm looking at now. I like the over. I like the okay. 21. I like the over there. <clears throat> I don't know. I think – Hopkins is going to win the game. I'm just not sure how it's going to look because I, I haven't watched enough Lehigh games to really have a good read on them. Um, I, I didn't think they were going to come out of the Patriot League, and they, they, they showed a lot of people why they're here to play. So we'll see. But give me uh, give me the over, and I'll be rooting for Hopkins. Yeah, I think uh, – I don't know what I like on the spread, but I do like under 21. I think that they these are two slow teams, slow, slow tempo. Uh, Hopkins has a very good defense. Lehigh wants to muck things up, slow it down, take the take the air out of the ball. So I'm going with under 21. And then when that's going to roll into Penn State, Georgetown, Georgetown plus one and a half. Who you got in this one? Penn State, love them. Um, yeah, I do too. I think Frasione is going to come back, bounce back. Yeah, I think you also need Penn State here. I need Penn State. That'd be nice. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think I think Penn State. Is just a better team coming out off a st- stinker performance. I think that they are going to be lit up for a chance to redeem themselves. Uh, they don't want to go out that the way that they kind of ended uh, the Big Ten tournament on. So I like Penn State minus one and a half. Syracuse Towson to close out the first round. Can you check on your app what Syracuse is by any chance? Yeah, you want to guess what it is? I'm going to guess that it's four and a half. I'm gonna guess five and a half. I'm gonna one. I'm gonna, sneak, I'm gonna sneak one right above you. My Wi-Fi is not great, so I'm going in there. But I, um, I think Syracuse is gonna. I think Syracuse is gonna roll. Um, do I think Towson's sneaky dangerous? Yes, absolutely. But I think if Syracuse is gonna win this game. It's not gonna be close. I think they can lose, but I'm confident they're gonna win. And if they do, it's going to cover. So let's find out shortly what that spread is. Um, Scrolling the great app of DraftKings. <clears throat> yeah, I think Tal- I think that Syracuse and like Will Mark not getting drafted, he could have a big game, which kind of scares me. But I think I think what is it? Three and a half. Yeah, see, I like Towson in this one. I'm uh, definitely going to be on Q spread there. That uh, that's a more, much more comfortable number. I still think they could have a chance to blow them out. So we'll see. Towson's your sleeper, right? Yeah, but it's kind of I'll go th- I'll go through it at the end. But I think Towson can muck things up. They're a tough, gritty team. I think that they can kind of fuck up a young Cuse team. First tournament game, no real tournament experience. Never fight someone that has nothing to lose. Towson has nothing to lose. Give me Towson plus three and a half. Give me Towson to win that game. Wow. And yeah, I, I also I-, I don't know if I gave my pick for the Michigan game, but I do like. Did we even go over the Michigan game? Michigan I Denver. I, I, I think we skipped over. That's the only one we skipped. Sorry, over. Michigan Denver. Denver plus one and a half. I'll go first. I like Michigan minus one and a half. I know it's in Denver. I think Michigan's playing great ball. Um, 
I look, Denver hasn't had like they had a good season. I like the way Michigan looks in current form better right now. Um, I think they've done more against more impressive opponents as of late. Denver coming off that big, big E schedule. Give me Michigan. I like Denver money line. Um, basically a pick them outside of the spread. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, I think Denver wins this game. I think they're a better, I think they've had a better season, like you said. And I think that does matter at some times. Did I think Michigan was going to beat the fuck out of Penn state and win the big 10? No, I've kind of been hating on Michigan all year. I'm going to stick my flag in the ground and say, I'm going to hate you one more weekend. Give me Denver spread. Or sorry, Denver money line. Yeah, it, it, like even the like even the wins that I saw Denver have that were impressive. I don't know how didn't even seem that impressive. Yeah, I mean the like for example the Hopkins game was kind of like a late comeback. Did they yeah, crazy they really goal? Didn't deserve that win, but they they stole. That's a steal. That's a that's a steal, and, and that's why they got the seating that they deserve. They should have a home game. All of that. It's just yeah. whatever. Um. I see who's that. your who's your final four? Um, I think I like um, you know, I, I've been high on these teams all year. Virginia, Cuse, Notre Dame, Duke. I mean, it's a little boring, a little stale, but I think those are the four best teams in the tournament. I think lacrosse is a hard enough sport to get an upset at any time. I think it's even harder to get an upset in May. I mean, it's, it's not March Madness. We we don't see a lot of massive, massive upsets when teams are just a lot better than other teams. I think that's why Notre Dame's value is, is where it is to win the Natty because they're just a step above everyone, like you said. But I like those four teams, and I, I consider them the big four. Maybe other people don't, but but I certainly do. You can see there, there's been upsets in the past. Um, there's May Madness, not March Madness. Uh, you know, there's, there's some years where some sleepers sneak through the cracks, uh, I think, and I think this year is one of those years. I think I, ha- I have Notre Dame making the Final Four. I have Michigan for the first time in program history making the Final Four. I think Ow. that they get by Denver. I think they might face a like again a young Q's team or a Towson team. I think Michigan gets it done against either of them. Doesn't matter if Michigan in my Final Four. Um, then I have Virginia in my Final Four. I have Virginia beating Joe's, then Virginia beating Hopkins. This one, this is where it gets tricky. I have Maryland beating Duke. Can Maryland upset Duke? Right now, I'm saying no. But that might change next week. So right now, I'll put Duke, Notre Dame, Michigan, Virginia. All right. That Mich- I mean, Michigan can be dangerous. They showed us that the last few weeks. I mean. I think, I, and look, I do think that Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Fuck it, Nest. Notre Dame, Michigan, Virginia, Maryland. Locked. Locked. I love it. I Do you think it's fair to say that I think Malisak hinted at this? Is it fair to say Virginia got the easiest draw in the tournament? Hopkins is really good, but Hopkins isn't playing their best ball. I agree. I just feel like the other three sections of the bracket just have like like getting through Q's is it would be really hard. Getting through, I think Denver or Michigan is going to be hard. Obviously, Notre Dame. I mean, Penn State's really good. So even if Notre Dame wasn't up there, if you swapped Virginia with them, I don't think that one's easier. Yeah, I mean that's that's just how I look at it. I think Malasek definitely hinted at that. I think it's if like, you're a Virginia, better get it get in now. Because as they keep on winning, the, those those odds on DraftKings are going to go down. So, so you're just looking at like, let me just go through like since March they had a loss to Accuse, a loss to Navy, beat Rutgers, which is fine, beat Michigan, and and then since the Michigan win, they beat Penn State by one, wins a win, they beat Ohio State by one, wins a win, which honestly they probably shouldn't have won. And then they beat Maryland by two, seven to five, then lost to Michigan 10 to seven, which like wins are wins. Sure. It's just the reason that I'm taking Virginia over Hopkins is going to come down to playoff pedigree, teams that have been there before, revenge game from the beginning of the year. I I believe I believe in, in movies. So I'm going I'm going with I'm going with Virginia to beat them. 
But yeah, that about wraps it up. That was a long episode. Um, that was a long week. Nestler, I appreciate you taking the time to just talk across with me the past couple of days. I know it hasn't been easy. Um, glad to just get away. It's been, you know, we had fucking the live show right after. We had the draft preview show with Adam Lamberti. We had the draft like breakdown preview for the weekend. Uh, this episode getting Jordy back on. So that was nice. Appreciate all you guys that are listening. Maybe we'll try to do a live reaction show or just to the games on Sunday night uh, to just, just to try something different. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that more off air. If not, be prepared to have an episode on Monday or Tuesday morning, breaking down all the games immediately after so we can break up these pods a little bit. We're going to be going to two episodes per week. We'll give out, try to give you guys a schedule so you can, you can get this on your drive, get this on, on your YouTube, however you want to watch it. But I appreciate you guys. Nestler, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, just a little shout out to the boys at Cabrini. You never know when it's going to be it. It's officially lose and go home. Uh, I've been riding for the boys all year. I got the national championship flag draped over the chair. Got my lucky hat on. They're going down to CNU. Um, I'm going to try to get down there really fucking far. But uh, I heard they got a good video system. So if I don't make it down, I'll be I'll be eyes glued to the TV, uh, cheering my dick off. Those boys are special, and that's cool fucking rules. So uh, everybody who tanked it, you can go to fucking hell. And uh, Curse of the Week coming back very soon for the NCAAs and, of course, the PLL. So stay tuned for all that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, we really appreciate it. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you follow us on all socials. And um, thank you guys. Love you. Love you, boys.